Good evening, everyone. I'm LaDawn Davis. President of Oban Energy, Sat Paul Dana, speaking to a large crowd of residents in East Grand Bahama last evening about the multi-billion dollar development poised for that area. Kimberly Mullings of our Northern Service in Freeport leads us off tonight. President of Oban Energy is taking time to address a room overflowing with various members of the community. Sat Pal Dana opened the meeting by addressing the daunting question of what took Oban Energy so long to meet with residents and stakeholders on the island. He said that the wait was intentional. Oban did not want to openly discuss a project that wasn't tangible without having real commitments from the Bahamian government and other shareholders. He also made commitments of his own to Bahamians. Every first consultation we have will start here in East Grand Bahama. So the information we release, the technical team, the discussions that we have around our environmental strategy, our engineering design will start here because this is the people it affects the most. So that's my first promise to you. The second one I'll make is my job is to give you the opportunity with this project to assess it based on information and facts and to be the first to apply for the jobs, to sign up to the training. Those in attendance were given the opportunity to feel questions and concerns to the president of Oban. East Grand Bahama native Pastor Cecil Kemp is fully supporting the Oban Energies project and says it has been a long time coming for the settlement. There are people who came in here with an orchestrated effort to destroy and stop this. And that can happen. Let me give the people a strong message. With all respect to all who visited, let us deal with our fears. Another East End native, Phil Thomas, shared a similar view. Most of these people who are making noise in the market, they don't have no ties here, so they might retire here. They don't spend the money here. When it comes to the environment, that's how I make my living. I grew up on the water. I got a grandson. He, he loved to fish. We know what it is to die. We're out talking with Kroger and Lobster. I dive around and start away. I used to wait there. And you, in that harbor, you could, I used to dive enough lobster to feed the whole Compound. Bahamas initiative manager with the Bahamas Bonefish and Tarpon Trust, Justin Lewis, was concerned about the environmental impact assessment. Why was there a heads of agreement signed prior to a proper EIA put in place? Thank you. Thank you. And then within, within that heads of agreement, you can only be fined by the government if something was to happen, $3.5 million. $3.5 million can't fix anything. It's gonna, it, the, but just the bulk sharing in itself can, uh, contributes in excess of $141 million annually. Then this says that Oban was informed that in order for an EIA to be conducted, they needed to consult with the best commission, an independent body that reviews and approves them. The best commission were not permitted to meet with us or refused to meet with us until an EIA, until a heads of agreement was signed. So we followed a process that was dictated to us by the consultants that we have. And now we have had a site visit from the Best Commission. We have had our scoping meeting. But the key point is that this project will not proceed until an EIA is done, the mitigations are put in place, and an independent body appointed by the government you've elected determine this is safe to proceed with and protects the environment in the best possible way. Oban Energy's president, Dana, says fines will be levied against Oban if there is damage to the environment. Kimberly Mullings, ZNAS, Network News.